Miss Caitlyn Jenner throwing her hat in the ring, apparently yeah, for dude. governor. Is she trying to participate in the recall then? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, trying to participate in the recall um, and apparently uh, has been in talks with political consultants, uh, including some that are previous Trump supporters um, or Trump allies and aides. Um, so certainly she would be running as a Republican. And I guess that move makes a little bit of sense if you think about the last Republican governor of California, which of course was Arnold Schwarzenegger, another rich celebrity. So, you know, if you're going to win in California as a Republican, you basically have to be uh, from like the the aristocracy. Elite. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and unlike, you know, um, Matthew McConaughey or Tom Hanks or The Rock or, or any of these other celebrities that have floated runs for um, office, uh, Caitlyn Jenner is unique because she's really laid her politics out in the open up until this point. She has not made it a secret uh, what issues she supports and her own political leanings, whereas someone like Matthew McConaughey has kind of um, intentionally been quiet about his real beliefs, you know, trying to appeal to everyone all at once and, you know, not piss anyone off. Um, Caitlyn Jenner has had a slightly different approach up until this point. Again, despite the fact that um, she's one of the most high profile transgender people in the entire country. Uh, she has been quite unapologetic about her support for um, the Republican Party and the GOP, um, you know, claiming still to be pretty entrenched in the Republican establishment, despite their regressive views on LGBT issues. Um, so this is interesting because, um, again, she's basically just a Republican in all senses. She's not any she's not interesting in any way as far as her politics goes. It's not like she's a populist Republican and she wants to get out of the wars or like something like that. No, she's literally like a, a libertarian economic, like borderline anarcho-capitalist. And I can even play a clip here um, that I pulled from a while ago when she was talking about this and talking about um, her. Yeah, and it makes total sense, right? Uh, obviously, you know, she's going to come correct when it comes to like, oh, okay, like, you know, oh, hate crimes against trans people. But outside of that, where it's not something that she's personally experiencing, like there's going to be no robust social infrastructure no. improvements under this. And it's one of those things where uh, um, to see her run against uh, Gavin Newsom after a bunch of like, like it, it just I think it's going to put a lot of uh, liberal cheerleaders in an interesting position now that they're going to have to like reckon with the fact that after spending years and years being like, you know, slay queen, this person is like, no, we actually, you guys actually have completely <laughs> different politics. And you were so excited to use this person's uh, identity as a, as a vehicle uh, for, you know, I, I, you know, and I'm not saying that, you know, trans representation and trans rights aren't, you know, important, but you can definitely tell the insincerity with which the prevailing neoliberal blue check community, you know, advances such, yeah. um, you know, agendas it's not because they actually give a shit about the trans community, right? It's just because it's easy to obfuscate away from economic issues when you're, uh, you know, focusing on things like this. 100%. It's 100% to obfuscate away from economic issues. And, and honestly, given Jenner's brand of economic libertarianism and um, identity politics on steroids, I'm surprised she didn't choose to go into the Democratic Party. They probably would have welcomed her with open arms, you know, but uh, I guess she's going to take a crack at the GOP primary. Do you think the GOP is open to, or ready? Or well, I mean, I hate to you ask those kinds well, of questions. Well, here's the right? thing. About, I just the thing assume of, the worst. The thing know. about the GOP is that they love to point the finger at the left and, and pretend like people on the left are love to do identity politics. But as soon as they have someone that they can claim as their like token whatever, they're the first and loudest to do it themselves. You know, they'll trout out uh, you know their their token representation at every event they can and, and beat the identity politics drum. Uh, just uh, just as hard, if not harder, sometimes than the Democrats will. Um, so I think it's actually totally impossible, totally possible that the Republicans embrace this kind of shit going forward. Uh, again, with Trump, you really saw it towards the end of his term and his reelection. They were um, really blasting the diversity thing, you know, going to like, um, you know, doing sp like speeches directly for the uh, Latino community and stuff like that, which, you know, I mean, good, do outreach to all communities, obviously, uh, but it really is just symbolic. It really is just bullshit because, again, their policies don't match up. They don't, uh, you know, help the marginalized, you know, communities at all. So it, it really is all just theater and symbolism and identity politics. And uh, I think a good, you know, demonstration of that is this brief clip here where Caitlyn Jenner talks about her Republican values. Has not historically supported LGBTQ rights. It's easy for me to convince the Republican Party to do a better job when it comes to all LGBT issues than it is to convince the Democrats to have less taxes and less regulations to let the economy thrive. Honestly, for the community, my own personal feeling. 
Lack of taxes and regulations will not help the trans community or any marginalized community. It's only going to further empower the corporate elite in this country. So it's just hilarious that uh, she's like, well, you know, we got to work on trans rights, but also empowering corporate America, you know, as if those two things would marry. Well, well that's together. what the GOP is famous for doing, right? Like the working person and the, you know, big corporation are the same thing. They're synonymous. If you impose any restrictions on a corporation, that's tyranny against you as an individual. It only makes sense that you know as a trans woman you know she's you know gonna apply that same if she's a republican trans woman like you know what i mean like it makes sense like this is the one you know it's not necessarily that she's yeah. concerned with oppression it's that this is yeah. an issue. it's kind of like uh you know when you know christians like okay like you might be concerned with the oppression of like one specific christian right but it's like broad scope christians are not concerned with like religious oppression you know yeah. what I mean? If it's like outside of the Christian church, they love to be like, oh my gosh, look at this reverend that was told that he couldn't serve food to this person, you know, and like this one like extremely random arbitrary case where there actually is, you know, Christian oppression or a war on Christianity, which they love to say. But it's not like if that same kind of persecution were taking place against another religion that the conservative movement would jump behind it. I think it's all that kind of same thing where it's like, oh, if it can be tailored to me or something that I relate to you know, then it still kind of yep. works into that conservative ideology at the end of the day, because it's not about empathy. It's not about people that are not what I'm experiencing, what I'm experiencing. Yeah, I think that's totally accurate. And, you know, despite Caitlyn Jenner's, you know, completely terrible politics, the, the funny thing is that she actually might not be incorrect about the point that her presence in the Republican Party as, uh, or, or, I mean, this was from a couple of years ago, but she's probably correct that her presence in the Republican Party was good for the trans community, ironically, because it, it, it did prove to, you know, the Republicans that fear monger uh, and hate transgender people that, oh shit, like trans people are just normal human beings. Uh, trans women can also be terrible, you know, Republicans, just like me, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like th that's just kinda... like me, you know what I mean? That's that famous Matt Taibbi piece where he, you know, talked about the, the, one of the most like interesting uh, phenomenon of the Bush campaign was that they were like, all the people that were voting, they were just looking for people who were like, like who thought the same way, you know, yeah. and that they felt like, like, you know, even though it was absolutely ridiculous to believe that George Bush was like one of the guys, like a working class blue collar, that's actually the message that he was effectively able to communicate to the people was that, you know, he was just right. a regular guy. Absolutely. And um, I think it's also worth mentioning that the trans community at large, from at least what from I've seen online uh, is pretty much roundly opposed to this as, has, you know, condemned Jenner's politics and, you know, saying like, okay, well, you're a trans person, but you're a trans person in a high place. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be loyal to other trans people. You know, it means you're going to be loyal to the people in your class, right? That's what we see all the time with this kind of stuff when, you know, the Republicans or the Democrats prop up uh, a represent, you know, an underrepresented minority and be like, because of this person's identity, uh, they're going to be progressive or they're going to be different than everyone else here. But often we see that that doesn't actually translate into, you know, progressive legislation or anything. And sometimes, again, they just do use it as tokenism to to mask uh, their their human rights abuse and their continued disenfranchisement of certain communities. Um, and and like it, like this commenter says here on Twitter, um, you know, Caitlyn Jenner may be trans, but does not necessarily represent trans people. Um, I've and seen that's a lot the case other... with everybody, right? That's why you can't. Right. I mean, exactly. people are, I mean, any, any individual group is not a monolith, right? Like, uh, you know, if you put me in a group of, if you, if you're taking a poll of the country, right. And you were to assume that every uh, white guy without a college degree thought the way I did, you would be fucking dead wrong. Right. And you have to, and I, I imagine that's the case with everybody. You know, you have to assume that that's the case with everybody. We're all fucking individual thinkers, right? Just because like trends happen. And, and that's the thing about our media. And that's something we'll get into later today when we do our analysis of this chapter of Hate Inc. But that's what our media trains us to, you know, think about, right? That's why they're so obsessed with, you know, uh, polling and surveys based off of things that they can label us with, you know, oh, this class or this age bracket of people who make this much money or this people with this skin color who are between this age group and this demographic because that's how uh that you know, that's how they get us to think like oh everybody who is in this demographic thinks this way and that, that breeds defeatism and it makes it seem like it's impossible to coalition build and find commonality and those kinds of things they're just divisive techniques that are just so uh knit into the fabric of, of the media